Do you enjoy the finer things in life? Is your taste in media simply better than everyone else's? Or are you simply just broke? Well, then vintage lenses might be the thing for you. Before this video starts, I want to say that I had a few people comment uh, on my last video, which was posted like six months ago, I should clip this thing to something like to my shirt, which would make sense. So anyway, I'll be doing the rest of the video like this. It's a platypus. It's a platypus. Like a year ago, I bought myself a Helios 44M-4. I do have a video on that on this channel if you wanna check it out. It's a very nice lens and I absolutely love it. And one of the things that I never intended to do with it when I bought the lens was professional work. I just wanted to use it to play around. Fast forward about a year, that didn't happen. I have to say, as someone who doesn't really know much about vintage lenses, but I do have quite a bit of experience with them, I know it sounds contradictory, but just let me have it. I, I think I have some tips I'd like to share about how you can use a vintage lens for things that you wouldn't think a vintage lens could be used for because they're surprisingly versatile. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing a few tips and tricks on how to make the image out of your vintage lens look professional. Dare I say cinematic, if that word hasn't been used enough. You know, I will say cinematic because as much as I think that word has lost all meaning, getting a vintage lens is kind of like a cinematic cheat code in a way. So the first tip I have for you, which is optional, you don't have to do it, but I highly recommend it, is to de-click the aperture. Now on some lenses, this is easier than others, but it does require you to actually open up the lens and modify it. Some lenses you buy on eBay already have people that have done it for you. Oftentimes the Soviet lenses uh, will have that done, the one I bought, the one that this one right here. This one came like that with a declick aperture. The reason to declick the aperture is mostly to avoid uh, the stepping of aperture when you are changing exposure. If you need to change exposure throughout a shot, let's say you're doing a long take and your subject's moving from outside to inside or inside to outside and you don't want the whole blowout, uh, you will have to change the aperture. Now, again, this is something you can easily avoid by just not shooting scenes like that, but it is something to no. know. Now, this is an optional one. I don't recommend it if you are not someone who's comfortable tinkering with things, especially if it's a more expensive vintage lens, but it is something that I think helps in the long run and I just personally prefer it. One mod I don't think is optional at all is to get yourself a matte box. Because these lenses are older and they don't have the same technology we have in modern lenses, the glares are just more prevalent. And the easiest way to get rid of those, pretty much the only way, honestly, is with a matte box. Especially if you're shooting outside, you'll need a matte box. It's not even, it's not even an option, honestly, because you will see a massive difference in the amount of contrast that comes out of the image from one of these lenses. Now there's a lot of science onto why matte boxes actually do work, and I could get into that in a different video, but for today, just trust me, get a matte box. My next tip, and the one that if you take anything away from this video, this is the tip you should remember, is to pay attention to your aperture. Your aperture, while yes, it changes your exposure and it controls your depth of field, on a vintage lens, it's almost like a vintage slider. Now this applies to all lenses, but the smaller your aperture, and I mean like the smaller the actual aperture, I guess the higher the aperture number or the f-stop, the sharper your lens gets across the board. And I know what you're thinking, well, yeah, because you don't get the blurry background though. And I don't mean that, I mean the actual center focus of your lens is sharper in lower apertures. I lost, I lost the colored light, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep going. So normally when I'm shooting with my Helios 44, I'm usually shooting at around like an F4 or F5.6. Again, this thing can go all the way open to an F2, but I rarely use that unless I really need that extra light. 
or I'm really going for that shallow depth of field vintage look. And I know what you're thinking. You have a vintage lens, you should do that. But it's not really that simple because at F2, this lens doesn't perform that well. Sure, it's got like the soft vintage feel a bit, but it's very much like a specific vintage look. It's not like something I would probably use for 90% of shoots. Maybe if I'm doing a specific scene where someone's in like a dream sequence or, you know, someone's in a field, you know, surrounded by flowers and prancing through it or whatever, maybe then I'd open it all the way up. But normally, I don't think so. I don't think I'm gonna because the lens just genuinely looks better. It almost comes alive at F4. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain unless you've used it, but you're perfectly in focus area at F2, honestly, doesn't really seem that in focus. Again, this is a 40 year old vintage lens that was mass produced and, you know, even in its heyday, probably didn't cost that much money at all. and still doesn't. So you can't expect that much from it. But again, this applies to more than just vintage lenses, honestly, just lenses across the board. You drop that aperture down and you will get some pretty good result. Now here's the kicker. And I think the one that often puts people off of buying vintage lenses is yes, you do have to manual focus. Now manual focus can be scary sometimes. And I get it. I have three main tips for manual focusing with vintage lenses. The first one is pretty much a reiteration of the previous one. Stop down that F stop. Shoot at an F4, shoot at an F5.6, shoot at an F8. Maybe not, that's pretty low, but you get the point. Shoot at an f-stop that you feel like you can comfortably control because shooting manual focus is a skill in its own and it takes time to learn. Second tip I can give for shooting manual focus is getting yourself a nice big monitor. Something like a five inch, maybe even a seven inch monitor to stick on top of your camera and use that to focus with because it genuinely makes a world of a difference. Trying to focus on the tiny little LCD on the back of a camera just does not work well. I've tried it, cannot recommend. It's fine, it's usable. Maybe your eyes are better than mine. It's possible, my eyes are not very good. But with that said, it's still easier to shoot on a large monitor, especially if your camera doesn't have focus peaking tools or any sort of focus assist tools. And now the final tip for shooting on manual focus specifically is to just practice. And I mean like practice, practice. It's not something you probably want to hear, but shooting with manual lenses just in general is kind of its own art form. Eventually it'll be something you kind of just get into the groove to and you'll be able to follow along to someone walking straight at camera and you'll be able to follow your focus pretty much right along with them. Part of it also just makes you feel like you're more a part of the image creating process. You know, if you're a car guy, it's like driving a manual car. It's just something about it. Like you feel like you're so focused and you're in to the scene, you know, you're into whatever you're shooting because you have to be fully present and you are actively doing something to make your camera work. Now, again, most of these are merely just suggestions. I don't expect you to follow this video like a Bible, but I will say vintage lenses are definitely a learning curve. And the biggest tip I can give is to just spend more time with them, experiment. So if you're on the fence about getting a vintage lens, honestly, just get one. Get a cheap one. Get like a Canon FD 50 millimeter. They're dirt cheap. You can find them on eBay for like $30 and they're just a lot of fun. Even if you don't ever plan on using it for any sort of professional work, I do think it's something that's worth just playing with. It's just like, you know, challenging yourself, trying to make yourself a more well-rounded filmmaker. If you do want to use these lenses for professional work, you definitely can. There's no right or wrong piece of gear to use for a video as long as you use it well. I firmly believe you do not need the best video gear to make good videos. However, if you do decide to go down the vintage lens route, it will take a little more work than using modern lenses.
Now, maybe that's something you want to do. Maybe you want to be more involved in the video making process. And I think a vintage lens is for you. But if you're someone who's looking for a vintage look, but you're not really looking to put in the time and effort to actually making a vintage lens work, I'd recommend just finding yourself a nice little lens filter. Anyway, that's the video. Appreciate you for watching and sticking out to the end. Please like and subscribe. I am trying to start my own video business right now, and I may be putting little updates on this channel. So if you'd like to see that, please let me know. All right. I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs> my light battery died the second I said it knows. It knows. Thank you.